This is James with Gulf Coast Claw Company, walking you through the installation of your suspension spring on your Yacht Grandfather Clock Mechanism. The clock pictured right now is an Ergos Mechanism installed inside of a Ridgeway. It's being shown for demonstration purposes only to show that the chime rods, without being removed at the block or on the mounting board, can be quite difficult and may get in the way of installation of the suspension spring on your clock might need to remove these screws pictured here now on either the mounting board or on the block itself in order to get clear access to the suspension post to do no damage to your suspension spring during installation. Right here we have an undersized suspension spring pictured against the suspension post followed by an oversized suspension spring. You may find that your suspension post has been crunched down in times past to compensate for an undersized suspension spring leading to a normal size or oversized spring to not fit in the post. If you find that the suspension spring does not fit in the post you want to take a screwdriver very gently pry open with one hand while you grasp the top block insert it into the suspension post with the other hand very gently keeping in mind not to break either the brass post or the suspension spring itself. Here's the yawk movement very similar to what you have. This is the normally sized suspension spring in a best case scenario slipping right inside of the post. This post has not been smashed down however it's not uncommon to find that one has been smashed down in order to fit with an undersized spring. If you have to open it up to fit a normal sized spring or an oversized spring relative to the size of the suspension post you can do it like so. Grasping the suspension spring in the top of the leader, passing it into the other hand and grasping it by the top block, you want to make sure to first slip it into the crutch, and then next you want to very gently, grasping the top block, stick it into the suspension post, and before it can fall anywhere, inserting the taper pin to retain its position. And there's the hanging suspension with the leader attached at the bottom. Do this one more time to make sure that you got it the first time. First, insert the suspension spring into the leader and grasp the suspension spring from the top block. Make sure not to damage the very thin spring steel leaves that connect the two blocks. It may help to hold the leader and the spring in one hand, taut as shown here prevent it from slipping, falling, or twisting out of position. While passing it to the other hand, you want to first make sure to put the leader through the crutch assembly. And you want to make sure to hold tension onto it while it's being pushed onto the crutch so that it doesn't fall off while you're inserting the suspension spring into the top the suspension post. Again, this is an ideal situation for the spring fitting in an unaltered suspension post. You may have a little bit more difficulty if the suspension post has been crunched down in order to fit an aftermarket undersized spring, or for some reason the suspension post needed tightening at some point after it had been fabricated. You want to make sure to keep all the tension to the top block and not put a lot of effort into the bottom block because that can put a lot of stress onto the suspension spring and could potentially damage one of the leaves. While you're holding in place the bottom block, take your other hand, insert the taper pin through the suspension post and also through the spring. Do you feel like it's tight? You can see that it is secure as pictured here. At this point you should be able to take your hands off and your leader and suspension spring are both hung on to the mechanism. Next we'll do an alternate view of the same operation to clear up any kind of visual questions you might have.
Here's a side view. The same situation. Here we are holding the suspension spring and the leader assembly with one hand, placing it onto the crutch assembly. While switching hands and holding the suspension spring and the leader in one hand and inserting the taper pin with the other. In case, again, the suspension spring is for some reason oversized relative to the slot size of the suspension post, you do the same operation, but before you insert the spring, you take a screwdriver very gently and try to pry open the suspension post to insert the spring in and then inserting the taper pin. This next shot shows a little bit better of a crutch setup. Make sure that it's engaging on the proper place on the leader. Otherwise, it's the same. Opening the post with a screwdriver, slipping the suspension spring into place, inserting the taper pin in order to hang the leader in the proper position. You probably don't want to end up doing this. If you're not careful, you hang the suspension, you don't hold on to the crutch, you'll insert the taper pin, you have a little bit of difficulty getting that leader on once the spring is already hung on, as you can see right here. This is a proper placement. You'll notice that the shoulder is correctly placed within the crutch. There is breathing room between the leader and the crutch itself. You want to make sure that the crutch is perpendicular, vertically and horizontally relative to the back plate. Setting the beat of the clock is done with the lever on the long side of the leader. You can hear right here that it is quite obviously out of beat, so we're going to adjust that right now. Sliding it over to the right will push the beat more towards the left still not quite enough. It has to go a little bit further as you can hear the uneven tick-tock. Actually moved it too far here. We're going to need to move it again to the left till it sounds very even like that of a metronome beat. that is very close to where you need to be for the beat on that pendulum leader. Just a little bit more to the right. As you can hear now, the beat is very even. The interval between tick and talk is very consistent and that's the sound that you're going to look for in a good even pendulum swing. Right here you can see on the microset it's not an imagination where the leader is moving evenly to the left and to the right and the error is within less than three percent on either side. The goal is to be within five percent even if you don't have this tool you will be able to hear whether or not the beat is evenly ticking.